Hello everybody, we're here to talk about a hybrid hot water heater project. Now there's been a lot of these reviews done on YouTube, so I'm going to try not to repeat any of them. I just want to show you a few things that were a little bit unique about this project, and hopefully they can help you out. It all started over here. Um, right now, this house was built in the late 60s. And it's hot water baseboard heat, and it's got an on-demand hot water coil. Uh, this boiler has the coil right here. You can tell there's, um, you know, these boilers are a little bit different with each one. Uh, but you basically have cold water coming in and hot water going out. Um, my first question was, okay, if I'm going to hook up a hybrid hot water heater, how am I going to disconnect that coil? Um, some people had talked a little bit about maybe running the hot water output from this coil into the cold water intake of the hybrid hot water heater. Um, one of the concerns I had with that is that might be great while the furnace is running and it's preheating the water, um, but all summer long, if your furnace is not running, you're dragging cold water through the coil and through your furnace, which is causing condensation and corrosion on the inside. So I didn't want to pursue that angle. So what I wanted to do is just disconnect the coil and not use it. So what I did was I basically just took a um, compression quarter turn compression valve and put it on the cold water line. Of course, had to drain the water, cut it in, connect it up, and then run the water back through. And when I got the hot water heater all hooked up, I just shut that off. So that stops the cold water from cycling through. Um, okay, but the furnace is still going to want to kick this thing on. So all I did in that case was I took this cover off here, and you've got your low setting down here. Um, and I just dropped that all the way down. Um, so just turn that thing right back. Now. This is not totally offline. This thing is still gonna come on once in a while. It's like every couple of days or maybe once a day for maybe a minute or two minutes or something like that. Not a big deal. Um, some people will be able to shut off their furnace in the summertime since they no longer need it for heat or hot water. Um, some of these, like sometimes if I say furnace, I don't mean that, I mean boiler. Um, but sometimes these boilers will leak if you shut them right down completely. Some of them won't, some of them will. So this particular one happens to do some leaking if you shut it totally off. So I leave mine on all summer long. It kicks on once in a while, and I think it's good for it to run a little bit. It doesn't use a lot of oil, so that's not a problem for me. Um, so anyways, that's how I dealt with this thing. Now let's go over and take a look at this hybrid hot water heater. A uh, real quick review, what's a hybrid hot water heater? This one here, it's a 50 gallon uh, ream, and it's just basically the same thing as a regular hot water heater with like an air conditioner on top. Um, like an air conditioner that cools your house on the inside and dumps all the hot air outside, what this one's doing is it's, it's got, still gonna cool your house um, on the inside here, but the heat's going inside the tank. It's heating up your hot water. So, a couple of things about this installation. Uh, first thing, I like to put the hot water tank up in the air a little bit. Gives you a little more gravity feed for draining the uh, system. And I also like to use one of these pans. Uh, because when the hot water heater fails, doesn't matter what it is, it's going to leak. Uh, you should have a way to deal with it. So plan that right up front. Um, this particular pan has a drain out of it. So this drain comes out over here. And hopefully, if this thing leaks, the drain will keep up with it. Um, where that goes is over to the other side of my room here, other side of my utility room. And I have a downstairs bathroom in this house. So I have a uh, sump pump or a, uh, a sewage pump with a, uh, you know, that pumps it out, basically. Uh, so back to this thing. Um, another thing that you have to keep in mind with a hybrid hot water heater is that just like an air conditioner, as it takes and cools the air, uh, pulls the heat out of it, that's gonna pull moisture out of the air. So it needs to do something with the moisture. This line right here is the output for that moisture. It needs a place to drain. If you are in a basement that does not have a drain anywhere, you're going to need some kind of a pump system that's gonna receive this condensate and then you'll be able to pump that out. Um, fortunately, because I already have a pump system, I'm just draining over to that. So I drain the, uh, the pan over to that, and then I drain the condensate over to that. And then I also am using the, uh, this is the uh, safety release valve from the uh, hot water tank. And uh, 
you you can't use regular PVC on this, uh, but you can use C PVC, which is a little bit of a yellow colored. Um, it's a chlor chlorinated polyvinyl chloride. Um, so that's what this is here. That also drains to that same area. Um, you have your uh, cold water coming in down at the bottom and your hot water coming out of the top. And I also plumbed up the hot with a with the CPVC pipe as well. Um, so a real quick way to hook these things up. Um, it's really nice to, uh, well, I used a couple of different things. One, I used the same compression fitting valves uh, that I used over there on shutting off the coil. So I used those to tap into the line. I used regular copper and solder um, to do most of the work. And then I used shark bite connections in a few places. Um, the real good thing about using shark bites is you can do all your soldering and pipe work out on a bench and then bring them in and shark bite them together. And that just goes a lot smoother. Uh, so let's take a quick look at how this is connected. Up on top, you've got your uh, thermal expansion tank. Uh, this house is on town water. So when you have uh, a pressure regulator coming into the house, you've got a closed system. So you have to, when you heat the cold water, there's gonna be expansion that's going on. So you need a tank that will allow that expansion to uh, occur. So this goes on the cold water side. Uh, all of the instructions for hooking this up come with the, the uh, hybrid hot water heater. So just kind of keep that in mind. So here's your expansion tank up on top. You've got a vacuum relief. Um, and then coming down here, I've put in a uh, pressure valve that shows the water pressure. You can see the water pressure in this location is pretty high. We're right up at 70 PSI. And um, then when I come all the way down here and put in a six inch uh, trap for the heat. So I come back up and then run the, um, the cold. This is all the cold water line. Um, but they recommend having a six inch rise in your cold water line before you go to feeding it. Uh, this is a shark bite connection here that threads onto here. Um, I used thread tape in these connections, but um, I, I want to suggest that you use some of that um, stuff that comes in a tube for, for uh, threaded connections because the thread tape uh, seemed to leak a little bit in most of these connections and it took like maybe a day or two for it to stop. Uh, so you can avoid that by using the other stuff. Um, same thing up on the hot water output. Also a shack bike connection uh, with a threaded connection onto the tank. And the electrical connection is over here. This is a 10-2 wire. So you got a black, a white, and a ground inside of this. The uh, black is going to be hot from uh, 120. The white is going to get used like a red connection, so that's also hot going to 120. In your box, you have a 30 amp breaker uh, that this connects to, and then the ground wire connects up as well. And like I mentioned, uh, you know, this is all in the manual. Uh, they show you how to connect it all up. If you're not comfortable working with electric, um, then certainly make sure you're hiring somebody that's done it before if you haven't. Um, a couple of things about this usage. These, uh, these things can be really efficient. We run ours most of the time in, a, uh, in the hybrid mode. There's an efficiency mode that uses both hybrid and the coils, the electric coils. Um, but we tend to run ours with pretty much the hybrid and it's got a slower recovery time, but it uses less electricity. In just the hybrid mode, I use uh, roughly 1 to 1.2 kilowatt hours per day per person. So there's three people in the house. We get roughly, you know, 3.6, uh, 3 to 3.6 kilowatt hours per day. Um, and then over the course of a month, it's roughly 100 to 110 kilowatt hours, uh, which runs to like uh, in this area, about 15 bucks a month uh, to run your hot water. Uh, for three showers a day. I think that's about all I can think of to say. Um, you know, please feel free to leave any comments or questions and I'll do my best to answer them. I hope that helps you with your project and uh, good luck. We'll see you.